Hey there, this is Seth Schaefer from Team Just Cause Robotics, and in today's video, I'm going to talk about the testing that I've done over the last couple days and past two weeks of doing different configuration changes to Division to try and make it a bit more competitive against beater bars and vertical spinners that I might fight at Norwalk Havoc events. You can see here in CAD, this is a mock-up of what a Fingertech beater bar looks like, kind of attempting to attack Division with my new anti-beater configuration, which is a hinged fork setup. So the idea behind this setup is that I have this attachment here with this hinged fork that can travel about yay far, so I can travel below where the ground would be and up to about this much angle so that when I'm gyroing it has a chance of still running the floor, but it can't get stuck in a super high upright position because it will run into some material that's part of this mount. So I'm just going to show some videos where I was testing that out and seeing how the robot drove and stuff with that running. I also just got some brand new batteries from MaxAmps. Thanks so much MaxAmps for being a sponsor of Division version 3. They gave me these batteries for free. They are about 10 grams lighter than the battery I was using before and it's considerably smaller. So for this test, by the way, I am using 3D printed nylon versions of the uh, long forks and it's using the same exact um, titanium or aluminum forks that I can have on the sides of my wedge config as well, but instead of being in the middle, they can go on the outermost edges or in the middle for this setup. So right now I have them on the outermost edges because I figured that would be the more difficult one for self-writing. I want to make sure I can still self-write just fine in either case. So yeah, right now this was just running the bot, driving and weapon at max speed for as long as possible and trying to see if I can get to three minutes. I had the weapon at 100% speed, or I think 75% speed for most of this time because I almost never run 100% during a fight. Um, and the idea was simply to try and, you know, behave similarly to how I would in a fight with driving and turning and uh, just generally stress the system as much as I could for most of how long a fight would be. Uh, this goes on for some time without much interesting happening. And it starts to slow down. I think I brought the weapon down to like maybe 50% soonish after the two minute mark. So 75% weapon speed for more than two minutes now. Okay, but yeah, kept going for a little bit. Eventually got to around the three minute mark. I turned the weapon off. I was able to keep driving for a bit. Now you might be thinking, wow, you can't keep your weapon running for three whole minutes. What the hell are you supposed to do to survive a three minute fight? Uh, I, I won't, but I don't have to. Um, you see, if I look at the historical stats from Norwalk Havoc, which are thankfully provided on the Norwalk Havoc's website for Division, um, you will note that my average fight time out of 27 fights is only 83 seconds long, so less than a minute and a half. Um, generally speaking, my weapon is broken by the point that a fight's going to go longer than two minutes anyway, so I don't need to worry about the power consumption of it, and uh, I'm just generally really not that worried about being able to run the weapon at close to full speed for an entire fight when that will never really need to happen. I can run it at about 50% speed for easily three minutes. It's just running at 75 or 100% speed uses a lot more power because you're dealing with the uh, drag, which squares with speed or even becomes cube with speed, depending on how you look at it for in terms of the power draw. So anyway, um, that test went pretty well. Um, and then I wanted to see if I could try hitting stuff and see what might break on the bot because I had had some intermittent drive troubles at, at different points during my testing before. Um, I also wanted to make sure I could self-write from like every possible position. So there's a bunch of clips of me trying to self-write from different orientations with the uh, different weapons. Start out with the cutter blade, do it from the back just fine. 
Don't worry, I have an arming switch on my transmitter that makes it so that the weapon can't spin up. So I never handle it with the arming enabled. It's always disabled so that it can't spin up on me. And I generally try to use like a tool or something to handle the weapon instead of using my hand. But sometimes I forget. Generally not a good idea to put your hand in the path of a robot weapon, even if it's disarmed. But, you know, better safe than sorry. Maybe do as I say is, and not as I do in this one instance where I grab the weapon directly. But you can see it still doesn't really have a problem self-writing from all different positions. Doing some gyroing. We've got some clips of me trying to reverse the weapon and seeing what would happen. So not a lot of positions that I can reasonably get stuck in with this spot, thankfully. That was kind of the idea. As long as the weapon works, I can generally get unstuck from almost anything. I also tried to record some uh, slow motion clips, which might end up being super boring, of just self riding in various orientations. To see when the thing actually happens, because these clips are... It takes less than a second to self write so... Um, there's no audio when I'm recording at uh, 960 frames per second, because the camera just doesn't record it. Um, so, yeah, you can see here the blades just slowly coming around and then just the moment of inertia of the weapon allows it to kind of pivot forwards even without the blade bracing against the floor and it kind of overcorrects here quite a bit and does a full front flip. That was caught a little bit late on my camera. I think this one's a little bit better. There we go. So here you can probably see the whole thing happen since I can only record about two seconds of high frame rate footage real time and then it's 40 times slowed down here. I'll speed this up a bit so it's maybe not quite as long since there's not a ton of super high speed action going on here. So this is maybe 20 times slower than real time. A few little pirouettes there. You know, as one does. Just, you know, screw gravity, I guess. It's labeled this one as glorious for some reason, I guess, because it's a really nice angle of it. You can see here that weapon tooth just barely scrapes the floor, and then there's so much forward momentum that the bot can basically do an entire flip, almost. That's just so much, so much physics. Let's speed that up a bit. Let's see that again at, like, a little bit less than, uh... I think this might be like one eighth of real time or something. And then this is again that like worst case scenario kind of. And then I wanted to try some weird positions, so like this is another one that could be really bad, is if my back is literally, the back of the bot was just flat against the wall. Um, when I started this, obviously it started filming the high speed a bit late because I have it set to an end trigger, so I basically have to hit stop recording and then it takes the last like roughly two seconds of what happened. So I need to try and time it so that exactly two seconds of elapsed basically of interesting things, which is pretty difficult you can see here. You got some glorious flips. And then this one was with the weapon against the wall. So same kind of deal. I was trying to see what that worst case could be like. Plays back at one tenth of real time here. And not a problem whatsoever.
Nice. Almost went over, but kind of caught itself there. Didn't spin up too aggressively that time. And this one was just uh, a video of what the turning gyro looks like. And then I backed into the wall too far, so the weapon ended up hitting the wall here. So, oops. Let's <laughs> do that up a bit. But it ended up kind of recovering from it anyway. Let me try playing that back real fast so you can see a little bit more of what happens there in a short time. Physics, baby. So I have a bunch of those same clips that I recorded in real time on my phone, but then I recorded them all at 60 frames per second, 1080p, and then watching them back, it turns out that they all look kind of awful. I'm not really sure why. They all just have like terrible bitrate. But you can see this is like the same one where I had my back against the uh, the wall there in real time. So that was the same as just to give you a sense of how slow 40 times slow motion is. <laughs> Wall there. Bounces forward. I did some tests where I was just driving around as well. Here's one of those where I accidentally drove into the wall and ended up bending one of my forks. So I ended up choosing to get two different sets of uh, rigid forks. So I have titanium ones that are an eighth inch thick or 0.125 inches, and then I have aluminum ones that are 80 thousandths thick or 0 0.08 inches. Um, and you can see that right there, I drove into the wall at that weird angle. It bent the 80 thousandths aluminum fork completely. So I ended up swapping that out for the titanium ones. Which turns out to be super easy because it's just two screws on each side. So this is a quick uh, eight times time lapse of that. I also was playing around with anodizing the titanium. That's why they have that nice uh, purple to orange transition there. Not sure exactly what final look I want to go for, but it was really easy to just sand off the anodize and redo it over and over again. I might make a video showing the process of doing that, but it's... I basically just followed what a bunch of other tutorials I found when I googled how to anodize titanium showed, and uh, there's plenty of other people who are more experienced with it than I am. You hear the beeping sound is just me adjusting the, the trims on my transmitter to try and get it to track straighter. So after that point, I was like, all right, I've tested just the weapon with the self-riding, I've tested just the drive, um, but I haven't tried hitting things. This is where things got a bit hairy. In other words, this will put about as much shock into the system of my robot as possible. Test box is closed and locked, this might be a terrible idea, I'm running on like maybe 10 batteries, hang on, I was just driving around for a while. Um, this block of aluminum that I've painted red here is more than three pounds. Starting out at like less than 20% speed here. Off to a great start. I already flipped it over and didn't get under it effectively. Trying not to kill myself here. Forgive me for being slightly cautious. Uh, 
up to this point I hadn't ever tried hitting something this heavy in my test box. I wasn't sure if I'd just send it into the ceiling and then it would break through the roof or something. It's one of the main reasons I was running at such a low speed percentage in the throttle. Oh, I lost a drive side. What the hell happened there? Aha. Uh -huh. So this was the first of several times that I ended up running into drive issues. So I wanted to show the process of the troubleshooting and like, you know, you can see what happened that was causing those issues. So this is the first time I had a problem. It's like really where it's going. I basically tore the whole bot apart and then... I was trying to figure out like what was going on because it seemed like it was just a signal disconnect to that drive speed controller. It would be this guy. Street. Oh shit. I see the problem now. Connection broke on the speed controller itself. Look at that. That white wire is not going to anything anymore. Looks like it just uh, was packed in too tight into that corner and vibrated too much or something, and that wire broke off. So, yeah. I ended up having that, and then also. I have to cut the insulation back and resolder it, but that's a pretty easy fix. Just has to connect to one of these pads up on right. There's one other issue, though. All right, so it looks like what happened was this speed controller's signal wire broke off, as you can see there. But also, look at this capacitor here. That one's, like, diagonal. It's, like, not attached to the board anymore. That one capacitor right there is just shifting around, so... Yeah, so I don't really know what could have caused that capacitor to come off, to be honest. But in any case, that broke off. In an attempt to fix it, I dropped it and it disappeared into the nether because it's tiny. Um, so I ended up just replacing the speed controller entirely with a fresh one. So this is what that ended up looking like. I just cut the uh, power leads off of that first one and started them onto this one because this is how long the leads were on, on this guy beforehand. I accidentally cut them way too short. Um, so I decided I'd just extend the wires with the ones that were on that other speed controller rather than trying to solder a connector on here and having there be like no wire length at all. All right, well, she ain't the prettiest, but she'll work. Now, this was the second time, or the second big problem that I ran into in my testing in the last couple of days. that drive speed controller, let's try this.
Fly weapon reversing self riding is nice. Oh fuck! And there we go. So I actually was recording this at 120 frames per second, so I can show that again at one quarter speed. So you can see there I actually hit the steel screw, and you would think that would be much harder than the aluminum, but somehow that's not actually what broke the belt. That's what broke the belt. Just a nice solid hit to the aluminum. So let me back things up and I can go through frame by frame here once I get to the right spot. So that's just a piece of aluminum and then boom in like basically one 120th of a second the weapon just goes to a dead stop and then the belt's gone you can see the belt just tears right off there and there we go so why the hell did this belt break well obviously it was the shock load from a big hit but what i was confused about was the fact that i've never had this happen with my past versions of Division, where I was using a considerably thinner belt. I was using a 4mm wide belt, and now I'm using a 5 16th inch wide belt, which is uh, quite a bit wider, and it's an XL belt, which has bigger teeth, so... I mean, maybe it's just better at transmitting the shock load than the smaller belts I was using before. I'm still not entirely sure. I'm gonna... I bought some belts that are reinforced with different materials. These are Kevlar reinforced. So you would think they would be good for this application, but... Yeah, strangely, belt just snapped. You see just how deep some of the gashes that Division made in this thing are. Hit a lot of places, that's for sure. It just took chunks straight out of these corners, which I would have expected. There's some deep ones, though, for sure. So yeah, was doing some good damage to this test brick, but couldn't keep going because the belt. So I don't really know exactly what the solution to this problem is going to be yet. I've ordered some more belts, like I said. I'm going to try those. I'll report back in my next Division video how that goes, obviously. Um, here's another test where I had some drive issues. I switched to the other weapon as well, obviously. And this is with a brand new belt. Oh yeah, I also switched to the shortest fork. Uh, configuration again these are just 3d printed nylon forks and they're way too lightweight the real ones will be steel so the weight of them should keep them on the floor but because these are so lightweight there was a little bit of stiction between the little gap in the tpu it was just a bit too narrow and i've, I've fixed that in the model now um so they kind of get stuck upwards which is annoying they're getting stuck up because they don't weigh anything I've locked up Feels like on the right side it's like locking up a bit or something. Left 
car is now stuck. What the hell? Yeah, so this was a different failure mode than the first time. So the first time I had the speed controller signal wire break off. This time, not so much. Check the battery temperature, it basically was fine. Um, then as soon as you, I pulled the battery out, you can see exactly what went wrong. XT30 connector for that drive speed controller just unplugged itself. So all I did was uh, basically put a zip tie on it and then... Everything worked again, hooray. This drive side again died. So I'm still having signal issues now on this side instead of power issues now. Um, the issue is the signal wire for this drive speed controller has to get to the receiver, which is on the other side of the robot. So I have a signal wire running to my PCB. Then the PCB carries that signal wire over here. Then the signal wire goes to a three pin connector here to there. The three pin connector on this side though is like horizontally sticking out on the top of the board. And the battery was like slowly crushing it and pushing it down and down and down until the solder joint broke from that 3-pin connector. So to fix that, I just decided to solder on some short wires onto there, just like I'd done with all the other XT30 connectors, because I was having those bouncing out whenever the bot hit something like a wall and the shock load would push it straight backwards. Okay, in an attempt to fix the uh, inconsistent drive, what I've done is... First, I've added some space-filling TPU things just so that the battery is not bouncing around as much. Uh, most importantly, though, I soldered in a short um, female connector to go into the female side for this drive speed controller instead of using a pin that was like soldered on here because it was sticking out and it was getting bent down and that connection was breaking. Um, it was just kind of generally flaky when it wasn't broken, too. So yeah, there you can see that. And I just packed foam around the battery and had that TPU thing to support it a bit better. So let's see if anything goes wrong again. All right, finally, now I can just see if I can break a belt or not. Keep wheeling on this stupid three pound brick until something else goes wrong. myself backwards into the stupid short plastic ports. I'm not getting underneath this thing at all. Honestly, I probably should have it off entirely, but I'm lazy. the belt again. Damn it! Yep, so that happened. Uh, let's take another look at that one in slow motion if we can.
So again, pretty substantial hit. And just the shock load killed it. Let's see if we can do the frame by frame here. Weapon's going fast. And boom, weapon stops immediately. So once again, it's like basically when all of the energy gets transferred at once, that's when it puts so much force into the belt that it snaps, which is understandable that that's when it would snap. But I still don't think it should be snapping in the first place. If it was going to snap, it would snap when all of the energy is transferred instantly. But it's not like all of the energy from the weapon is going into the belt. It should only be the energy from the motor, really, that's going into the belt. Because it's when the weapon stops, the motor has to stop too. And it's just the force of the motor having to stop, in theory, that's what's ripping the belt. So I'm not really sure what is going on that's causing that, but I'm hoping that either a steel fiber reinforced belt or maybe even just a stretchier like polyester reinforced belt will maybe do better than the uh, Kevlar reinforced one that I have here. If only because Kevlar is so stiff. I mean, steel is obviously stiff as well, but hypothetically stronger. But Kevlar is so stiff, it doesn't want to stretch even the tiniest bit. So as soon as you pull on it, it either pulls taut or it snaps. SD1. And it's just coming apart. Classic brittle fractures where it's tearing out chunks next to where the hits are, but all the hits are carving through solid aluminum for sure. So, I mean, this is definitely the pretty much the worst thing. I mean, look at that. Look at that. It fucking nailed that bolt <laughs> so hard. It bent it 45 degrees while stretching it against a fucking wa- That's a steel washer, that's not even like an O-ring, I think. Jesus Christ. Uh, delivering lots of hard hits, and apparently some a bit too hard. Here's some, uh, some other testing I did with the disc yeah, weapon. Right, turn the robot on. Oh yeah, so I just wanted to hit something because I was frustrated at this point and, uh, well, you know, it's fun. Yeah, you can tell this takes so much more effort to spin up though. So much more energy in this thing. If I break a belt hitting this, I'll be really sad. Whoa, is the disc wobbling side to side of it? Oh yeah, I found there's a bit of wobble. What's happening there is simply that I didn't Loctite any of the screws that are holding this upright into the carbon fiber nylon test chassis that I have here. I'm still waiting on the aluminum chassis to come in from the guy who's machining it for me and it might be another couple weeks for that. Um, so yeah, I just didn't Loctite any of the screws so those, they were coming a bit loose. Anyway, let's get back to the part where I hit stuff again. Yeah, that, that hit the ceiling on my test box so hard that one of the two clamps popped out, so I just had to re, uh, re it there. Get the chance that my robot spectacularly disassembles itself because of the upright coming out oh, with a little bit screwed. the ceiling so hard it bounced the steel blades that were sitting on top of my test box off. Okay, maybe you don't want to do that too much. So here's some slow-mo hits. Um, these were recorded separately from what you were just watching. But here's a nice one where I just launched the thing straight into the ceiling immediately. 
Again, this is one fortieth of real time. I'll do one one tenth real time. Still looks like it's pretty fast, even though this is way slower than real life. And then I think it's the same thing here, basically. It looks like I barely even touched the thing and just sends it straight two feet up into the ceiling. Here's that in 40, 140th speed. Light little love tap and it's gone. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all I've got for today. Um, I will report back when I have some new belts to try out and see if those fix the problem that I was having with the belt snapping, but at least I was able to suss out some drive issues and potential for more drive issues. I filled the uh, heat shrink that was s around where the signal wires are on both speed controllers for the drive with hot glue to better support the wires to prevent them from popping off again. And obviously I replaced the uh, dead speed controller that had a capacitor pop off. I'm not entirely sure what I can do to prevent capacitors from popping off in the future, but if that actually does happen again, I'm sure I can just pull the heat shrink off, fill the whole thing with like hot glue or, or silicone RTV component, which is a real-time vulcanizing rubber, which is what we use on Bloodsport to code our speed controllers to prevent the same thing from happening. And then I'm sure it'll be fine. All right. Uh, hopefully this wasn't too long and boring and there's more than six people still watching at this point. Uh, if you are still watching this video, please tell me in the comments what you thought of it. Was this too long and drawn out? Was this actually interesting the whole time? So this is a lot simpler type of video for me to put together than all of the fancy editing I normally do. So I can do more videos like this without being completely exhausted. But obviously this is very long. I'm looking at OBS of a 26 continuous minute recording and I have other stuff to put in front of this one. So. I understand if this was a lot <laughs> for one video, but I felt like it was important to at least go through the process that I went through or bring you through the process that I went through for testing and the problems I keep running into and how I fix them. Uh, yeah, that's all I have for you today. If you like this video, click like. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notified when new ones comes out. And as always, thanks for watching.